Hey guys, I'm vlogging from my brother's bedroom. So if you see anything crawling in the background that shouldn't be like a half-eaten burrito or something from under the bed, it wasn't me, it was him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am back in Ohio. I was in Texas for the past six months with my sister, if you didn't know that. So I'm back here to stay. So this is my first vlog from home. And you're on some pillows, so hopefully you're not crooked or anything. So I really haven't established where I'm going to be vlogging from, probably random places. So, and it's three in the morning and I ramble, so <laughs> sorry. Anyway, this is called My Mind's a Bouncy Ball. And this dream is very spontaneous and my dream self was hopping all over the place like a bouncy ball. Whether that is because when I wrote this down, I was only picking up a few pieces here and there, never grasping the dream in its entirety, or my dream self had a complete lack of focus that night, I'm not sure. So, don't start reading this expecting a story. It's more a video montage with no rational continuity to it. And I had this, uh, these dreams <clears throat> um, on the 13th of May, so not too long ago. So it starts out, I'm traveling down a desolate road in the middle of the night. I'm not in a car, but I'm moving. I'm not walking, I'm standing still. The road beneath my feet, along with the land on either side of the road, rush past me. The earth is moving, I am not. A beam of light from an unknown source allows me to see a few hundred feet ahead of me, and I stand there, staring at the broken yellow lines in the road as they continue to retreat behind me on their own. And then next, I see a picture of crazy chickens, like huge bug-eyed cartoon chickens. And then, <laughs> I'm somewhere else. I'm with my ex-boyfriend and his brother looking at apartments in a foreign country. We are standing in the kitchen of one apartment talking about converting one of the rooms into another bedroom. We consider the kitchen, but there is gas leaking into it. So why we are standing there breathing in gas doesn't really make sense, does it? Next, I'm in a car on the road at night following a white suburban full of teenagers on their way to prom. They hit a truck in the other lane and the suburban slides sideways and the truck disappears on the other side. At first it doesn't look that bad and the teenagers are standing around in their prom dresses and tuxes. Then I see a horse trailer leaning over in the ditch, one side smashed up against a bunch of trees. A cop slowly opens the back of the horse trailer but only slightly before stepping back in horror. I catch a glimpse inside where the horses have been flattened, not completely fa flattened because I can still see their eyes within their faces. And then as I'm looking at this, one of the horses blinks. And then a man with a golden eye patch walks up to me. He was in the crash and the patch was covering a gash. And I don't remember if he said anything to me or not because next I hear a disembodied voice reciting Hemingway. And I look away from the car crash and I'm somewhere else. I'm in a ballroom, and I see Karen Knightley reading out loud, making grand gestures as she exerts all her energy and passion into reciting uh, whatever she was reading. I don't remember what she was reading. And then next, she sits down in a mother and father stand, and they're announcing the engagement of all their daughters, except for one. Kate Winslet is sitting at another table, table with her arms crossed, scowling at everyone because she isn't engaged. And to my subconscious, no, I am not upset that I'm almost 30 years old and most of my friends are married and having children. Um, I actually, at this point in my life, I don't ever care to get married for some reason. I don't feel like that will happen, nor will I have kids. Um, I've actually never really seen myself being married. And when I look into my future, I just, I just don't see any of those things. And sure, maybe I'll meet someone who would change my mind, but I highly doubt that they'd have to work really hard to change my mind and uh, and I've blogged about blogged about my experiences with men and you know ex-bastard stepfather so not really my fault <laughs> but anyway so next I'm at my grandmother's house but it is different in my dream her house is perched atop a rocky hill and after surveying the surroundings I realize she's living within an animal enclosure like at the zoo there are tigers and bears looking around their man-made caves and jungle gyms, and they see me, and they look hungry. And I run down the hill as fast as I can, because I think that they're chasing me. Oh, they're chasing me. And when I get to the bottom, the animals get tired, and they go lay down. So, I stand at the end of my grandma's driveway. 
and Jehovah Witness is standing there about to knock on the door. Because in my dream, the door isn't attached to the house. It's standing at the end of the driveway. Just, there's no wall connected to it. It's just a doorway uh, standing at the end of the driveway. And there's a Jehovah Witness on the other side holding his Bible about to knock on the door. And I panic. And I look around for something to hide behind. There's no couches anywhere. So as I'm sneaking back up the hill, I see my grandma stomping down the hill with a determined, angry exp expression as she mutters, I know what to do with him. I'm concerned about what she means by that de declaration of war against the Jehovah Witness, but some of my friends appear and they start drinking. And then within what seems like seconds, I'm drunk too. And I'm lying on the ground on my back in my grandma's driveway, completely wasted, as I laugh and eat avocados. And I really do like avocados, so. I haven't had them in a while, so maybe that's why I dreamt of them. Anyway. At this point, I woke up with the sun in my eyes, but I fell back um, asleep to dream one last time. So the dream I had when I fell back asleep is I am made of paint swirls on a canvas. I'm watching from the sky as a woman holding a parasol in a red dress floats down a river in a boat, all made of quick brush strokes of paint. The woman, the river, the trees, everything. Everything is paint, and it's just uh, the trees are moving. Uh, you know, kind of get a sense of like Van Gogh, Starry Starry Night, with the quick brush strokes showing movement. And but in this painting in my dream, everything's actually moving. So a man appears in the boat next to uh, this woman uh, in the red dress, and she leans into him as he puts his arm around her. The boat disappears under the cover of a few trees, and then I'm standing on a bridge, and I'm the woman in the red dress in the arms of this man, and we are no longer made of paint swirls, but flesh. But when we move, we turn into swirls of paint again, and we freeze. So the following paragraph is a phrase written down after these dreams. I'm not sure where they came from. I mean, I know I dreamt them, but I don't remember in what context they came to me. So the message from my dream self is, Spirit is love. The body is of bones and blood. It will wither and die. But love is eternal. Love is the soul. When you feel it coursing through your veins, that overwhelming feeling that drives you insane with want of another person, that feeling it is the electricity of your soul. And I I have that written down, and it's, it's something from a, uh, my dream after that. I don't know if I woke up thinking those things. I, I can't remember exactly. I'm sorry. But anyway, much of that night was full of nonsense, but that last message means something to me. Ever since I can remember, I've thought about what it means to exist, why we exist, what is it that exists after we die. I know some of these things I spend hours thinking about are things I'll never find an answer for, yet I continue to seek out explanations, and I believe the statement above is basically saying the emotions you feel is your spirit, so make your spirit happy and send positive vibes throughout your mind and body. <laughs> Anyway, I think one of the main reasons I worry about these questions is these questions uh, is I want to know if the ones I love today will be the ones I love after I die. And I don't know if that sounds silly or not, but it's something I I think about. Um, after I die, will I even know them? Will I see them again? My family, my friends. Is finding someone to give my heart to even worth it? If all if we all just wither and die anyway. So these are the things I think and worry about and I know it sounds absolutely absurd when I say that I think about my family and get upset because what if this time on this earth right now is all that I have with them and dear lord no wonder I'm single because <laughs> no I don't go around talking to people about this stuff and sometimes when I get to know someone I may open up about it you know the things I think about but then I get the raised eyebrow and usually stop talking but I feel fine saying this on my blog because it's just my friends I'm pretty sure it's just my friends and other writers and creative types reading this for the most part and we're all kind of kooky and crazy in some way. So that's it. And pardon my rambles. It's three in the morning and that's that's what happens.